Hello, it's Jay here again and welcome to another tutorial. So, we're continuing on with the opponent manager script. And we're actually going to begin by also opening the load character script. And we're actually going to copy all of this. So... Let's begin by copying all the private balls and you can paste that anywhere. I'll paste mine at the very top, I think, for now. So, I'll just tidy up the comments, bring them in line with the other variables. And we also need to copy all of these returns. So let's just copy those and we'll paste them in to the void start. And yeah, I think I'll put these at the top again. So now we know what character the player has chosen. And this is going to, um, we need to know this. Because what we're going to do, and if I come to my resources folder, is I'm going to create alternative versions for each of these models. In the same way as we created different coloured ones, I'm going to create a slight variant. So I'll either lighten or darken the colour of each robot. And I'll probably rename them as black robot and black robot alt for alternative and the same for the blue brown and so on and the reason for this is we want to load in the alternative character if um, the opponent order matches the character the player has chosen and, of course, I'm going to let the player also pick the actual boss, which is the return robot gold. So, with that said, and what I'll also need to change these here. I've appeared to have overlooked that, so let's just come to the load character. And we'll quickly change these to red and blue. What's the next one? Brown, green, pink, and finally gold. And, in fact, I'll just bring these all into line. And I'm just going to copy and repaste those now. So, and we will work. I know we've got this sort of copied into two scripts now we will work on condensing the actual script in but first i want to get something up and working and then we'll work on more refinements and optimizing and actually getting rid of any redundant code at a later date but as i said Let's just get something up and working to begin with. So I'll make sure they're both saved off. And then we'll continue. And we'll come here after the void update. And we can create, and it can be of type void as well. Load current, and we'll just say opponent. We'll open and close brackets, we'll open and close again. We'll come inside and we'll say if open and close brackets. And we're going to say underscore 
And what we want is the selected opponent. Double equals. And we'll put the little speech marks in. Some little quotations. And we want black robot opponent. And it must be worded the same as it is in the string. So you may just want to copy and paste just to make sure. Okay. We'll say double and. And we want the return robot black. And we're going to say exclamation mark equals. So this means does not equal true. So let's come to, in fact, we'll put the comment in now. We'll say if the selected opponent equals black, robot and return robot black does not equal true and then we'll come to the next line we're going to say underscore and we want current opponent remember this is the empty game object that we use to store the current selected opponent. So we're going to say it's going to be equal to, and we want instantiate, and we'll open and close brackets again. We'll come inside the brackets and we'll say resources dot load, and we'll open and close brackets. Little quotation marks, uh, we'll say robot black. And we'll come to the end of the line and we'll say as a game object with a capital G. Let's close that line off. And again, we must make sure it's named the same as it is here. So, in my case, and I might actually rename mine because I've sort of put robot first in some and the colour first in another naming convention. So I may go through and change them and make them all uniform. But let's just get that in place at the moment. Again, we'll come straight into the comments. We'll say then load and we'll put black robot let's say game object into the scene we'll come to the next line and then we're going to say else if we'll open and close brackets again and let's just copy Everything that's inside these brackets here, we'll paste those that in. Only this time we say that it does equal true, the return robot black. So double equals this time and true. So this time we'll say else if selected opponent equals black robot and return robot black equals true and let's copy this line so let's paste that in and what we want is black robot alt. And I'll just add alt 
to the actual comment here. And let's save that off. So we'll just go through this. I think it's so fairly self-explanatory, but um, let's go through this anyway. So if the selected opponent obviously equals, in my case, the black robot, but the player has not chosen the black robot as their character, then we can just load the normal model. However, if the selected opponent is the robot black opponent and the player has chosen the black robot as it's he or she's character, then we need to load in the alternate version. Then in my case, I'll probably just make a little bit lighter. Maybe, you know, tinge more greyish. Just so the player can differentiate between the two while they're actually playing. So, we need to copy this block. So let's just copy it and we'll paste it in six times. So how many we've got? One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's seven times. And I think we're going to leave the video here. Let's make sure we save that off. I'll close the load character script now. So, as you probably can appreciate, you need to go through all these blocks and change the applicable naming conventions. So, in my case, the white robot opponent is next. So, I would need to change it here and here. I would also need to change the return. So in this case, return robot white. And of course, you will need to change it to instantiate the white robot. And once you've changed that, obviously, you just need to go through and change the comment so in my cases there'll be twice each on the first and third line and i will also need to change here and obviously here on the fourth line as well and you'll need to do this for every block but obviously it's going to take me some time and i don't feel like it's really worth doing within the video because it will be tedious to watch and you don't really need me to show you how to go through and change each of these actual naming conventions so i think we're going to leave it here obviously in the next lesson we're going to pick this up and we're actually going to start implementing some code within the scripts that's actually going to make them all work and tie together. And we can actually see where we can where we've begun. So we'll be able to load through from the splash screen to to the actual beginning of the fight obviously the characters aren't going to do anything at the moment but obviously once we've got to this stage where everything's loading into that first fight scene then we can actually begin on working on the player inputs the ai and the other things that i know you are all looking forward to and obviously as i said we will be co coming back we will simplify some of the code, we will change little bits, we will add functions, but we'll do that all at a later date because as I said, I know how eager you all are to actually begin actually working on 
an actual fight and the scripts we need for that. So that is the plan going forward. If you have any thoughts or queries, please leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to try and answer. But as I said, this is the end of this video. As always, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope to see you next time. And until then, as always, bye for now.